Hi, and thanks for watching Youth Talk, a podcast run by Baptist Youth, where on each episode we take a different topic and get a bunch of tips from someone directly involved in youth ministry. In today's episode, we're joined by Pete Wright, the youth worker in Hill Street Presbyterian Church, and Pete's going to be sharing on the topic Bible-centered youth ministry. Recordings of each episode of Youth Talk can be found on YouTube, iTunes, CastBox, Spotify, or accessed through any of our social media accounts. Thanks for watching, and we hope you enjoy. Well, welcome to episode four of Youth Talk. Thanks for joining us. We're glad to have Mr. Pete Wright with us today. Pete, thanks you're, for joining us. You're very welcome. How you keep him? Yeah, good. Pete, you're the first Presbyterian to have on Youth Talk. How does that feel? I know, I feel very special for that. Yeah, very special. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully the, not the last. Could be the first, right? I was say. Could be the first and the last. <laughs> see how it goes. <laughs> Pete, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, who sure. you are and what you do? Yeah, so my name's Peter Wright. Um, I'm the youth worker in Hill Street Presbyterian Church in Lurgan. Um, I'm 31, I turned 31. Do you? Time. Yeah, so. so. Yes. Yeah. You're nearly as old as Phil, how Nearly. Nearly? Not, not quite. <laughs> um, I'm married to Linda, she's a solicitor, and we have uh, a little baby boy called Toby, just Very born good. 12 weeks ago. So, Brilliant. congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and so, you work here in Hill Street, yep. that's where we're filming. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about Hill Street, including the youth setup here? Yep. Um, so, Hill Street in Lurgan. Lurgan, first of all, I guess, you know, fairly generic provincial town. About 25,000 people live here. Um, Hill Street is a church of about 340 or 50 people or so. Mm. Um, in terms of youth ministry, there's lots that happens. Uh, we have uniformed organisations that um, have been running for a long, long, long time um, and do a great job at, at reaching lots of different groups of young people. Um, the work that I'm particularly responsible for is our Bible teaching youth ministry, I guess, it's mm -hmm. called Relate, that runs on a Saturday night, um, and that caters for all secondary age young people. So um, we've, we've lots of different stuff happening, but that's mm -hmm. the area that I have particular responsibility for. Yeah, it's quite a big church here, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, um, I mean, yeah, so it's like 350 people here on a Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. um, youth ministry-wise, we probably have between 35 and 40 who come along okay. on Saturday nights on an average average evening, which is a nice number. Super, brilliant. Mm -hmm. uh, so the title of this podcast episode is uh, Bible-Centered Youth Ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, and perhaps for some of the listeners as they hear that title, they're thinking, mm -hmm. well, what other sort of youth ministry is there? Is it mm -hmm. all youth ministry, not Bible-centered? Yeah. Uh, do you want to unpack for us a little bit by what we mean when we say Bible-centered youth ministry as well as perhaps some of the other philosophies or models that are yeah. out there? Yeah. Um, so, so you kind of said there, people maybe assume that all youth ministry is, is Bible-centered because it maybe includes the Bible in some way. I, I don't think that's the case. I think lots of people think a little bit of inclusion of the Bible means, oh, we're, we're doing Bible-centered youth ministry. Um, I suppose what I would say is that Bible-centered youth ministry is the conviction that God's Word is at the heart of everything that you're trying to do with mm. children and young people, that it's, it's setting the agenda for what you're trying to teach to them but it's also setting the agenda for how it is that you're trying to actually mm. do that teaching and how you're trying to minister. Um, it, there are lots of other ways of doing youth ministry. I think this is the one with the most theologically concrete foundations, I suppose, from, from Scripture. Um, I, I guess for me, the big thing that convinces me that Bible-centered youth ministry is the way to go is that it seems to be most fruitful for the long haul. Mm. Um, that what brings people is what keeps people and um, so as much as possible we want fruit that will last people to be living for Jesus for 20 30 40 50 60 years not just you know mm. 12 months or 18 months or whatever it is um, so in terms of other models right like I think whenever people people buy into maybe the attractional model of youth mm. ministry it tends to be pitched a lot at non-christians trying to put on something for non-christians to come to um, that's important, right? We, we want to reach people with the gospel. Um, but Bible-centered youth ministry, I would say, is slightly different in that its emphasis is on discipleship, mm. trying to build up and reach and train the Christian young people that are there so that they can then be equipped to be mm. those who reach their friends. Um, so that's how the Bible-centered youth ministry, I would say, differs from some of the other, other models. That Very are good. And um, what do you think are some of the... Those other models that you mentioned, what are perhaps some of the temptations to 
follow that, those sorts of models as opposed to a Bible-centered one, do you think? Yeah, I think there, there are loads, loads of temptations. Bible-centered youth ministry is hard work. Um, you've got to have the conviction that it's the Word and the Spirit that changes people, mm. um, that it's how God is going to speak and reveal Himself to young people, and you've got to work really, really hard at communicating that as clearly and as best you can. Um, I think we need our best communicators of the Bible working with young people. Um, mm. I think I think they're hungry for God's word when it's taught well and clearly. Mm. Um, but I think because that is really hard work, lots of people then think, well, maybe just let's just put on something that people will come to. Sure. Um, and if that's if that's your barometer for success, just getting something that people will come to, then maybe Bible Center Youth Ministry isn't the way to go, right? <laughs> but but I hope that that's not the barometer for success. It's not mm. the New Testament's barometer for success. We want fruit that will last. Yeah. Um, so we want to put on something where where people are coming, being taught, being exposed to the real biblical Jesus and trying to figure out what it means for, for them to live for him. Um, mm. I think there's temptation as well. <laughs> yeah, just to probably keep people happy, whether mm-hmm. that's parents, church leadership, or young people themselves. Um, let's just do something that everybody's kind of, this is good for our young people to go to. This looks like it's it's going really well. Um, sometimes, sometimes Bible-centered youth ministry might look like failure in the short term, mm. but I hope it won't in the long term if you're yeah. doing it well. Yeah. Um, I can say more about that later on. Brilliant, that's so quite a, uh, yeah, it's very helpful. It looks like failure in the short term, but actually mm. it's fruit that'll last. Yeah. We're going off script a little bit here, but sure. how does that affect, you said about, having youth leaders being Bible teachers. Yeah. How does that affect perhaps what you look for in a youth leader? I know quite often when we think about who should our youth leaders be, who should our youth pastors be, or youth ministers be, we, we try and look for someone who's just down with the kids. Mm. Um, how does a Bible-centered model affect what you look for in a youth leader? Yeah, um, it's a really good question. So I'll maybe try and answer this in a couple of different ways. First of all, I think one of the big challenges that maybe people have when it comes to Bible-centered youth ministry is they think, that works well if you have a gifted, charismatic, mm-hmm. evil Bible teacher, you know. Um, I get that. I, I do think you probably want to be looking for that in your youth pastor or youth worker. Mm-hmm. Their primary purpose, I think, is to be able to teach the Bible well to children and young people. So you want them to be able to be competent in handling God's Word. That's something that I would be looking for if I was mm-hmm. ever to, you know, take on an intern or you know, look someone else to come and work here with me, it would be, are they able in teaching the Bible? Um, in terms of volunteers, I'm always on the lookout for people who are able to connect with the kids, right? That's mm-hmm. that's really important, but that doesn't necessarily mean they have to be young. Um, and, and I really want people who are passionate about the Bible and Jesus for themselves mm-hmm. so that the young people will get that the thing that they're really excited about is, is being a Christian and living for Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, and that hopefully over time, some of that will, will rub off on them. Um, I, I do, in our Relate team, we have a blend of people who are um, students, some of them just graduating this summer, um, and we have, we have youth leaders who are in their 50s as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and in my experience, it tends to be that the youth leaders who are a little bit older um, are really, really good for the dynamic mm-hmm. of the team. They're the best prepared. They're the most passionate about getting young people to engage with the text and they are setting the bar then for my younger leaders in terms of what it looks like to be well prepared prayerful thoughtful about the passage um, I can't imagine doing youth ministry without those older people in my case I just can't imagine it so, so the, old, the old adage of youth ministry has a sell by date in terms of age nah, no nonsense. Nonsense. <laughs> nonsense. Yeah, nonsense hopefully that's an encouragement to some of the, some of yeah. the viewers um, Unpack for us then some of your key principles, convictions. Um, you've touched on some of them already yeah. about what a, a Bible-based youth ministry looks like then. Yeah. So what brings people is what keeps people. That's okay. that's a big thing for me. We want to be keeping people in the long run by getting them to handle about it for themselves, teaching them to listen to preaching, getting them to talk to other Christians about what the Lord's doing in their lives. Those are things that we want a healthy church member to be doing, right? Mm. So. I'm trying to make sure that those are the things that we're introducing young people to in our youth ministry. So we preach, I, I preach Saturday night for 25, 30 minutes every week. Um, and, and we're trying to teach our way through different books of the Bibles. We do that. So 
we've just finished year one of like a five year syllabus at the minute and in that we looked at the book of Genesis chapters you 1 nearly to forgot 11. There, yeah. didn't you nearly forgot there, did you? forgot there, We've just finished Genesis 1 to 11 and before that we did um, we did the first seven chapters of Matthew's Gospel actually. So ta- time is tight, right? We don't have loads yeah. and loads of time so we have to teach smaller chunks perhaps but um, yeah, we, we preach, that's an important thing. What brings people is what keeps people. The other principle that's important for me and I've stolen this from a, a guy called Ken Moser who I'll mention mm-hmm. later um, is that the best way to grow is to keep what you have. Mm. Right, so everybody wants their youth ministry to grow. We want our youth ministry to grow, but the way that I'm trying to do that is to invest as much as I possibly can into the kids and young people that we have, mm. so that they're the ones who are going to grow the youth ministry. Yeah. They're the ones who are going to hopefully be passionate about the gospel for themselves, so that they want their friends to to come and hear about it. Um, so I'm not trying to put on something that's that's trying to reach all the, you know de-churched, unchurched young people in, yeah. in Lurgan. I'm trying to teach and equip the kids that are here and part of this church family as best as I can mm. so that they're then equipped to reach their, their friends. So mm. the best way to grow is to keep what you have. I think that's been something that's, that's very formative for It's me. really, really helpful and, and probably is a lot different than what a lot of people kind of perceive youth ministry uh, yeah, to be. That's probably right. But slow growth in a sense is quite often the best growth yep. and the healthiest growth. Yep. Brilliant. Um, give us a bit of a flavour then, maybe in Hill Street, what and how Bible centered ministry then plays out, for example, in your yearly syllabus, yeah. and then as well as that, what a typical night looks like. You've touched on that a yeah. wee bit as well. Already. Yeah, so about this time last year, I um, sat down with a, a couple of our leaders um, and we reviewed everything that we'd done up in Relate. So this is my 10th year working on Hill Street, so we, mm. we looked at everything that we'd done over the past nine years. We realized that. Um, while we touched on lots of different parts of the Bible, there were there were loads of parts of the Bible that we hadn't really touched at all. Mm. And actually, some of what we'd done in those nine years was was repetitive. So we'd done a couple of different series twice. Um, so really, we were operating on a year-to-year basis. What are we going to look at this year? What are we going to look at this term? Um, last year, we, we made the decision to let's set out a five-year plan so that an 11-year-old coming to relate by the age of 16 will have looked at you know x y and z basically so we are trying to make sure that there's a healthy diet of a blend of old testament new testament and occasionally some thematic studies that we're going to look at together i guess part of that is we want to teach young people to handle the bible for themselves Mm. right that they're able to work their way around it that they see that the bible is an unfolding story of god's grace and that jesus is at the center of it um, so we're trying to put together a syllabus uh, that is the whole counsel of God as much mm-hmm. as possible. Um, on a Saturday night, what, what we do is really simple. Like um, We'll have young people who come here, um, they have a little bit of tea and coffee beforehand, some donuts, and then everybody comes upstairs. We sing a couple of songs. Um, a couple of the leaders lead that, lead the little band, but it's made up of young people. Okay. Um, so even that's discipleship, which I mm-hmm. teach those guys how to pick good songs that are Jesus-centered, that tie in with what we're looking at. Mm. Um, then normally I'll, I'll preach for 25, 30 minutes. Sometimes that's other members of the team that we're trying to train and equip a little bit. And then we break into age-appropriate um, single-sex small groups mm. that are led by, each group has two leaders as much as possible. We're a little bit short at the moment on that. Mm. But, um, so that those leaders are like super equipped yeah. for what they're going to be talking about. They'll have got information at the start of the term and information during the week about what's mm. going to be happening during the talk. Here's some of the things that I want you to talk about. They have discretion in those groups to, mm-hmm. to talk about whatever it is they want to talk about. They don't have to work their way through a set of questions particularly. Um, but we're trying to get them to tease out and apply some of what we've been talking about and get the young people themselves to mm-hmm. talk about the, the Bible. Um, sometimes that works better than others, right? There's some groups that are that are great. There's some groups where it's just slow and it's a hard slog and groups are quiet and it feels like for weeks upon end as though you're not getting anywhere. But... That's the nature of gospel ministry, mm. I think, a little bit. And that's the nature of adult small groups a lot of the time. Mm. So we've just got to be patient and prayerful and trust that God will be at work by the power of the Spirit to bring his 
work to life in the lives of the young. Right. So, so we're late Saturday night. Is that what age range is that for? That's for eleven right up to eighteen. Okay, so they're all, all together. And and those small groups would uh, leaders be in the same groups every week, the same small group for the year? Yeah, so works? they're in the same small group for the year and they travel up with the kids as well. Okay. Oh, so good. um the, the guys who are leading a let's say you know mm. fourth year boys small group at the minute will next year lead the fifth year boys small group. Okay. They have to start in again with, with a new group. So it does mean that there's a bit of, you know, you get time to be mm. relationally effective. I hope with, yeah. with your group. What strikes me as helpful uh, with this model of youth ministry as well is, it seems to be a far easier transition then to get young people involved in. Church yeah. and church services. Yeah. Uh, quite often, perhaps youth ministries, it's all about entertainment and, and fun and this mm-hmm. attractional model, as you put yeah. it. Yeah. And then the local church on Sunday morning is just like, whoa, yeah. what, what's this? Yeah. How have you found that in terms of is that part of your yeah. thinking and, and, and plan? So, in like, terms of so that, that again is another big conviction that you've reminded me of there, I guess. That um, <clears throat> I think having, having healthy ecclesiology is really mm-hmm. important in youth ministry. That, um, we're not competing with the church. We've got to not set ourselves up in youth ministry as an alternative even to yeah. to the church, that we are there loving the church and trying to help young people see that they are saved into the church and that the church is the context in which God wants them to grow mm. into the people that he wants them to be. So what we do and relate is in some ways even more intense than what happens in church <laughs> because what happens in church on Sunday, you don't have to go to the small group after church on Sunday morning, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, but we are trying to teach them you know, Christians do Christian things. If you come yeah. to a Christian youth group, we're going to do Christian things. So we're going to sing songs about Jesus. We're going to listen to Jesus speaking to us from his word. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk to one another about Jesus and we're going to pray to one another so that we live for Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that's, I guess, what we ought to be doing in church as well. And mm-hmm. we have found here in Hill Street that, that most of the young people who are coming to relate consistently, who are committed Christians, assimilate very easily into mm-hmm. the life of the congregation, which is great. I, I think that's a big positive. Mm-hmm. I know it's not like that everywhere, but yeah. I think what we're trying to do in Relief has helped that um, and made it easier for them. So. Super. Brent, as you've talked about um, this model of youth ministry, no doubt, yeah. as in any uh, yeah. model, yeah. you get some haters, we might call, <laughs> or some people who might um, no, no. share some concerns. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to fire some, perhaps, sure. common concerns yeah. Uh, yeah. that people might be thinking, or maybe okay. you've come across, yeah. and just tell us how you would respond to these. So. Based off this Bible-centered model of youth ministry, here's yeah. concern maybe number one. Yeah. Young people will find it boring. Surely young people just want to have fun and banter mm-hmm. um, and just to come and unpack the Bible for 25 minutes and be in small groups. Young people will find it boring. Yeah. That, that's a legitimate concern, right? Mm. Um, and I, I have seen examples of people who think or claim that they're doing Bible-centered youth ministry and it is just boring. Mm. Um, and if it's if it's boring, we're not doing it right. Mm. It shouldn't be boring, right? Like, so John D. Alcott, we both mm-hmm. know him, talks about, you know, in Hebrews 4, the Bible speaks about itself as being a double-edged sword, that if someone came into this room wielding a double-edged sword, we would have different reactions, none of which <laughs> would be boredom, right? So, so we shouldn't make the Bible boring for young people. If we mm-hmm. do that, we have done it at a service and we're not teaching it as well as we could. Um, having said that, I, I do think there will be young people who, who really struggle with this and who mm-hmm. find it difficult to engage with um, but we've got to persevere and love those young people really well and pray for them as diligently as we can and be relationally over committed and over invested mm. in them so that actually they will see what we're trying to do with you in terms of teaching is because we love you and mm. we want you to, to come to know Jesus so I, I had a small group of 11 and 12 year old boys right? most of the time they don't listen to my talks <laughs> right but we have, we have a pretty good and effective time together in our small groups because I, I try to work with them as best I can. I try mm. to make those small groups as engaging as possible. I don't make them super long. I don't make them super complicated. I try to get them to look at the Bible, pinpoint one or two things that we're, we're trying to learn, mm. pray for each other, and then go and get food. Yeah. So I, I'm working really slowly and trying to build up to where I want them to get to. Yeah. Um, I think they will be excited about the Bible. Mm. Um, it's going to take a little bit of time perhaps, but you've got to persevere, work with it, and don't don't lower the price so that more people will buy. Don't mm. don't change what you're trying to do so that the little 11, 12-year-old will come. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
which leads to the second sure. kickback you might get, yeah. which you've already touched on. Yeah. Uh, our numbers will dwindle. Yeah, they might. They might. And um, I mentioned that earlier. It might look like failure for a little while. Um, but numbers aren't the barometer for success, right? It's mm. fruitfulness that we're, mm. we're looking to produce. We want fruit that will last. That's what Jesus talks about in John mm. 15. Um, a book that's been formative for me, actually, and thinking about this is James Smith, You Are What You Love, um, talks about how lots of what happens in youth ministry tends to just be um, attractional and, I guess, trying to entertain young mm. people a lot of the time. Um, he slags that off pretty viciously actually <laughs> but he talks about how effective Christian formation of young people might look like failure for a time and mm. when I read that that was a really liberating thing for me not mm. because I want less people to come right I, I want them all to come yeah. but there are some young people who who won't be that interested in mm. living for Jesus and um, and so my job is to pray for them as, as much as I can and to teach the Bible to them as best I can and to form relationships with them or get my leaders to form relationships with them as best as I can and to encourage their parents to keep sending them even though even though they might not be that interested. Um, your numbers might dwindle in the short mm. term, but I'm convinced that if you do it well mm. and if you're seeing God at work, then your numbers will grow, actually. Brilliant. Way, so. Super. And finally, last kickback you might get. Again, you've touched on this, but it's a bit of recap. Mm -hmm. Surely this approach uh, won't be as appealing to outsiders who are outside the church. Yeah, yeah. And I guess that that's a legitimate concern as well. But um, I would want to say, first of all, our primary target audience here is those who are inside the church. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want that to sound like we, we don't care about those who are outside. We do. Mm -hmm. But it's because we care about those who are outside that we want to train those who are Covenant children, right? I know that Baptists might want to do that. <laughs> well, that bit, yeah. right? <laughs> we want to train yeah. our, our church family kids really, really, really well to be yeah. passionate disciples so that they will be reaching for their, their non Christian friends. Yeah. Um, we have non Christians come to Relate pretty regularly. Mm -hmm. We have leaders who are serving on the Relate team now who were non Christian 12, 13 year olds mm -hmm. and were converted and grew as disciples and are now serving in our, in our team. So I don't think Bible-centered youth ministry has to be anti the outsider. Yeah. I think the opposite. I think if you're doing it really well, um, there's something really attractive about a community of young people who are passionate about Jesus mm. and want to live for him. That Young people do not get much of that in their world. Yeah. And I think when they see it and when they see the Bible being taught well and people who are passionate and serious about Jesus, mm. they'll want to be a part of it. Yeah. Um, so it's not... I don't think it's anti-evangelistic in any way. I think the opposite, actually. Brilliant. Um, if it's done well brilliant that's really helpful finally then Pete just as we wrap things up um, mm -hmm. you've mentioned that book by James K. Smith yeah yep. what would you love yep. any other resources that you find helpful sure um, so the ones that have been particularly formative for me the most important book in my thinking about youth ministry has been this one by Ken Moser yep. um, Changing the World Through Effective Youth Ministry brilliant. Um, it's actually quite hard to get a hold of but mm. um, it's really worth Whatever it is, you have to pay on Amazon to get it. <laughs> um, another one that was helpful for me in the early years, Tim Hawkins' Fruit That Will Last. So I've been talking a bit about fruitfulness. Um, mm. That, I suppose, shaped much of my thinking on that. I think the best UK-based book on youth work um, is this one, Christian mm. Youth Work. It's pretty old now, sure, actually, yeah. but it's really, really helpful. Um, there's another one that's been published recently that probably is rivaling it a little bit. It's called Rebooted by a guy called Tim okay. Goff. Um, who works for Youth for Christ in Wales. He has a brilliant uh, youth ministry blog as well called Youth Work Hacks, I think. Okay. Um, you can check that out and post it in the comments. <laughs> and yeah. but, but it's probably like the next best UK-based um, book on youth ministry that I've read and come across. Um, and then this, by published by the Gospel Coalition, Gospel Centred Youth Ministry, mm -hmm. unpacks lots of what I've been saying here, particularly the chapter on... Um, expository preaching in youth mm. ministry which I've been talking a little bit about so um, those are some of the things that have been Brilliant. helpful for me super Pete thanks so much you're very welcome I really appreciate you taking the time Pleasure. to share with us thanks yeah. for watching or listening whether you've been watching it on YouTube or listening along on CastBox or iTunes uh, this has been episode 4 make sure you tune out and check out next week's episode episode number 5 next Thursday released at 8am thank you thank you